Hi everybody, I'm Jake. I make 5e supplements, they're on Patreon, they're usually dark and twisted weird. Recently the 1.2 survey was made available for us, as most of you are aware, or everybody is aware, and I'd like to go over some of the questions they asked and my responses to them, and we'll do a little analysis. So this is the Dungeons & Dragons D&D Beyond 1.2 OGL survey. First question, would you like to provide feedback on the content of the proposed OGL 1.2? Yes! Second question. Now that you've read the proposed OGL 1.2, what concerns or questions come to mind for you? 1. OGL 1.0 is cancelled going forward. This is simply not acceptable. 2. 1A, subsection I, our licensed content. Does this mean that you can simply update the SRD 5.1 in any way you like so that I am now required to use a completely separate set of information than that which I agreed to? 3. 1. Section B, works covered. Does this mean that we still can't create any updating websites like a filterable database or character creation tools? 4. 6. Section F. Or engage in conduct that is harmful, discriminatory, illegal, obscene, or harassing. Can you cancel any rights I have with the OGL 1.2 if you simply believe that I said something harmful or obscene in a supplement I create? Or worse, in my own personal life? What if you object to my having an OnlyFans account? Do I lose my ability to write content under 1.2? Why would I be okay with your company making moral judgments at all? You've proven that you are toxic in many regards. I do not trust you. Number five. Nine, section A, notices. Could you theoretically change this section in ways that would be inconvenient or even harmful to me? Could you later decide to require that I register all of my created content with you under 1.2? Or put even harsher restrictions on how you are notified of my work? Also, is it possible to remove the entire content of this section and insert any new requirements or penalties you like? because I've heard that you can do that in Congress. Yes, that's messed up. Any section that you can alter later is dangerous. I will not agree to anything like this unless you are extremely specific about what exactly you can change, how, and when. You're going to see that trend throughout this video, and probably every video. I like specific things. I don't like leaving room for error. Question three. After reading the proposed OGL 1.2, how has your perception of the future of Dungeons & Dragons changed compared to before reading OGL 1.2? I don't like this question at all. It's word inefficiently. What if I had a great opinion of it? Now it's much worse, because I'm seeing it in a moderate, logical manner. What if I had a horrible opinion of it and they did a little bit better? Then would I mark better or much better, in which case I don't get to write a response? You can, you can only write a response if you say the same, worse, or much worse. Anyway. What would be needed to improve your perception of Dungeons & Dragons' future? Showing that you care about creators and what we create by affirming 1.0a and making it irrevocable. And I mean actually irrevocable, not like the verbiage in 1.2. An improvement in the quality of your books for the high rates you charge would be good as well. Spelljammer was thin and nearly useless. Start making rule systems more robust instead of less. You are leaving more work for the DM to do instead of taking a stand on how something works and letting them diverge if they like. That's just a personal preference. I do think the quality thing makes sense objectively, but I really do just work better with a system that has a whole bunch of rules or clearly has guidelines to not have rules. You need something to work from, something to understand, and then you can diverge. It's easier to be creative when you have a platform to do so. The following questions cover material found in the Introduction to System Reference Document, SRD 5.1. Five. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International? I'm not an attorney, so I said three. I understand it like the average person might. My satisfaction level was also three. Because I don't care. I didn't really remark on my satisfaction with Creative Commons Attribution because it's not something that Wizards of the Coast wrote. They might have meant something different from that, but I took it at face value. So moving on. Six, how would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with the content found in the SRD that will be released under Creative Commons? My understanding was about a three, like average, for like most of these things, because I'm the average person. I'm not an expert in anything here. And my satisfaction was a one, because it doesn't really seem like they're doing much at all. I'll read my response. Do you have any other comments about the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International and or the content that will be released under Creative Commons? To my understanding, the core D&D mechanics were never able to be copyrighted anyway. This action merely sends the message that Wizards of the Coast is aware that we can't copyright these sections, while giving the impression that you are somehow being magnanimous or kind. Clearly, I think nothing of the sort. 
The following questions cover material found in the Introduction to System Reference Document, SRD 5.1. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with the notice of deauthorization? After all of the research I've done reading and listening to a whole lot of videos and spending time working with OGL 1.0, I marked that I have a high understanding of it. Five. It's the only thing I think I understand well in this document. However, my satisfaction level is a one, as you will hear. Do you have any other comments about the notice of deauthorization? The reauthorization of 1.0a is non-negotiable. We as a community may have been easier to approach if WOTC had originally responded to the leaked 1.1 OGL news with honesty, humility, and a desire to improve. Clearly, that did not happen. 1.0a must be an available license going forward or the majority of your community will simply depart from you. We've already begun. Yeah, okay, a little dramatic. That, that's me. Uh, moving on. Questions 10, 11, and 12. The following questions cover material found in sections 1 through 4 of the proposed OGL 1.2. 10. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with the types of content covered by the proposed OGL 1.2? My understanding is about average, because I can read. So 3. My satisfaction, however, is a 1, and I'll get to that. 11. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with the content ownership rights outlined in the proposed OGL 1.2? Understanding, again, three. I have reading comprehension. Satisfaction, one. Let's hear why. Do you have any other comments about the types of content covered and or the content ownership rights outlined by the proposed OGL 1.2? Types of content. I enjoy using websites that allow for dynamic changes, such as creating a new monster or a fantasy world of my own design based on features from D&D. &D. I want to continue to be able to do so. I think that's reasonable. Content ownership rights. If WOTC is found guilty of copying something that is legally ruled to be of my creation and I want you to stop selling it, I cannot require that. Even if a court of law finds in my favor, all I can get is money. You could continue to use what I made without my permission. This is not okay, nor will it ever be. Obviously. And me being the techno whiz that I am cut off the top, so I had to repaste it. So the question is... The following questions cover material found in sections 5 through 7 of the proposed OGL 1.2. 12. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with the You Control Your Content section? Understanding, three. Again, I read. Satisfaction, actually high, five. This is good. This made sense. Next question. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with the Warranties and Disclaimers section? Understanding was three. Satisfaction was one. I'll get to it in a moment. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with the Modification of Termination section? Understanding, I think I understand it pretty well. Four, I've listened to a lot of people talk about it as well. My satisfaction was one, and now we discuss it. Do you have any other comments about the You Control Your Content, Warranties and Disclaimers, or Modification or Termination sections? 6F and 7B, Section I. When taken together, these sections mean that if Watsi determines that I offended someone in my personal life because I cut someone off in traffic, they could remove my ability to use OGL 1.2. I understand that's an extreme example, but it's to make a point. No corporation should be given complete control over what is morally permissible by another party. I will never give Watsi the power to dictate what is harmful, hurtful, obscene, or anything else in these sections. This is really silly. Watsi is not my parent. I'm not paying them to give me a set of rules to follow for my life. Get out of my life, Watsi. Questions 17 and 18. The following questions cover material found in the virtual tabletop policy. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with a virtual tabletop policy? Understanding, three. Satisfaction, two. Primarily because it doesn't really affect me much. But I still don't like it because I'll get to that. Do you have any other comments about the virtual tabletop policy? Yes. The restrictions placed on companies who create software that interacts with or that is a virtual tabletop in itself are too strict. If this policy is the final version, then WOTC is going to have a monopoly on the VTT space. These are unfair restrictions and should be illegal. If you want to attract people to your VTT, just make it better than your competitors instead of trying to control people. That's kind of how I look at life, too. You don't need to control people, just do better on your own. Questions 19 and 20. 19. Have you used the OGL 1.0a or previous versions of the OGL to create third-party content? Yes! Yes, I have, and I'd like to continue to do so. However, they ask the next question oddly. Number 20. Do you want to create third-party content for Dungeons & Dragons in the future? How can I answer yes 
we are discussing the platform upon which I would do that. I don't know. Maybe. Number 21 and 22. Would you be comfortable releasing TTRPG content under the proposed OGL 1.2 as written? As most everyone says, no! Why do you say that? Well, thank you for asking, Watsi. I have listed reasons with explanations in my previous statements. In summary, Watsi is attempting to create an OGL that will provide the most money, not the one that creates the best community. You are specifically attempting to cancel the OGL 1.0a that has been in place for over two decades, which is the reason that Watsi is as big as it is now. Unfortunately, it is unlikely that you will have much more than a skeleton of a company if your recent actions and offerings are an indication of your future actions. In other words, shape up or we're shipping out. Questions 23 and 24. 23. Compared to the OGL 1.0a, do you feel that you would be able to continue developing content the same way under the proposed OGL 1.2? I only have a slight complaint with this question. I don't like being asked feeling questions when I'm trying to give a logical answer. It doesn't matter how I feel. No, I can't do what I've done before with the OGL 1.0a because you're removing it and you're changing how things work. So no. 24. Why do you say that? Lack of security, assurances, and freedom. Because it's simply not that advantageous to me. Questions 25 and 26. The following questions cover material found in the Introduction to System Reference Document 5.1. 25. How would you rate your interest in using the Content Creator Badge as part of your third-party works? Low? Why would I use the badge? I want my, my name, my emblem, my logo to show. 26. Do you have any other comments about Content Creator Badges? They are simply advertising. I may be willing to use them anyway if you keep OGL 1.0a active as it is into the future. I see it as doing a favor for them. Sure, it would mean I wouldn't have to copy paste something into a book that I sell, but it, it really is advertising for them. It shows at a glance people that are signed up with Watsi. And the last page that matters. What other feedback do you have for us related to the open games license or otherwise? See all of my previous answers. I will reiterate my initial explanation in case this is the only answer that is read. And then I copy paste it from the first one. I don't need to read it to you again, you just heard it. Thank you for taking this survey. Your feedback is crucial to our stewardship of the D&D game. The results of the survey will be made available by February 17th, 2023. I have heard creators and other people online say that creating a survey shows that Wizards of the Coast is trying to funnel our complaints into one specific channel that they can then control the results from in order to keep our complaints out of the public eye. Okay, I guess that's possible. I mean, that kind of makes sense if a company wants to make money as their primary goal, which companies do, and they want good publicity, which companies do. That's how people know of them and buy things from them. But I also see that there does need to be some forum for complaining directly to Watsi about what the issues are. Yes, they could have gleaned from many complaints what the core issues are. But how active are they really talking on Twitter and interacting with the community? Not all that much. So they might not have been paying attention. So it makes sense that they would want to be able to read everything from one source and have it organized in some way, at least to me, because I would want that. I wouldn't have to go searching for the answers that way. They'd be given to me. I think it would still be nice if they made the answers public, but there are going to be so many survey results that I don't know how they would. That's just my opinion.